Hey everyone, it's Nick from Nick's Crossing. Welcome back to the train room for a great tutorial today. You guys have been asking me during the live streams, Nick, can you do a tutorial? And today is the day we are doing a tutorial. I'm sitting at the workbench. It's official. Today's a tutorial. So here we go, guys. All aboard. All right, guys. So recently I did a review on this beautiful 462 Pacific style K line girls train. It's a beaut. Little, uh, call it the Pink Beauty. Here she is. And I actually bought this locomotive for Nikki, and uh, I told her, I said, you know, maybe I'll install rail sounds in the tender. I told you guys that in the video. I would do a tutorial on that. So I filmed all of that, and that was uh, this right in here. And this was actually a catastrophe getting this to work for me. And uh, I brought Nikki upstairs. I was like, hey, what do you think of the sounds? And it's a Hooter Whistle uh, sound package. Sounds phenomenal. And she said, yeah, it just doesn't match the engine. And I kind of thought about it, too. It didn't really match up with the pink and all that. It needs something a little bit more, I don't know, like soft. <laughs> the Hooter whistle is kind of abrasive. And I was like, you know what? You're right. So I trashed that footage before I recorded this video for you guys. And uh, we're going to install that Hooter whistle in this tender right here, this little PRR switcher tender that came with this 080 right here from the mid 2000s check her out now I think that Hooter whistle is way better suited for this locomotive this is a switcher it's it's kind of you know not as uh, appealing as like a streamlined locomotive or a pink Pacific I have on the desk here and I think it's gonna work out way better than putting that in the girls engine so I'm gonna dig that card out I'm gonna show you guys all the parts that came in the kit and it's actually a really, really nice kit. It came with the speaker, the uh, chuff switch, the board, and the only thing I had to buy were 9-volt batteries, which I got from Walmart right here, little alkalines. And then I had to buy some 3M sticky uh, adhesive strips right here, which are great to have on hand anyways if you guys are doing modifications, hobby stuff. And that was pretty much it. So guys, let's go table side for this awesome tutorial. All right, guys, so I got the old whistle unit out of this tender. So yeah, this starter set actually came with a uh, very, very dull sounding air whistle. Never really worked right. It was almost like being breathed on. It was like, <sighs> nothing too special there. And this whistle unit, let's see if it even works. <laughs> Just blowing some air through there. It sounds cool, but uh, yeah, need more power than whatever DC thing that is. Um, this is the frame right here. These are actually just, uh, little pieces of sticky stuff because I actually added weights and the reason why is because the uh, frame of this shell right here is actually plastic which is uh, it's pretty cool because our board which is right here will easily mount over plastic now the kit comes with the speaker right here and it is heavily magnetized so everything sticks to it um, the board has a bunch of crazy leads underneath you don't want to short any of that stuff out. It'd be a nightmare right there. Uh, we also have the chuff switch, which is right here. So we're going to install all of this in here. But before I do that, I want to kind of dry place everything um, just to make sure I have enough space. And in the tender shell, something I didn't do before, I need to look for where my clearances are for this roof of the uh, heat sink right here. Now if I do this, turn it upside down and place her in like that, it it's not going to fit because the height of the heat sink will be sticking over the uh, shell. So I need to actually mount this possibly in the shell like that and just put like a spot of hot glue or something in the heat sink to hold it all together. Now the reason why I keep on calling that a heat sink is because we have some uh, pretty gnarly components stuck to this piece of aluminum. So I'm assuming that is some type of heat sink. And uh, we're just going to go with that right there. Now the other way I could do this is actually mount this flat, like such, and then put insulator tape underneath so the board is stuck to the frame. And then this, having that uh, cover on top, will sit like that, and everything sits in there nice and happy. Now the other thing too to remember, I want my speaker to be somewhere where you can hear it and I might actually have to drill some holes for her. so if we mount it back here over top of the uh, rear truck yeah like that that would work 
Um, actually, it won't because of the plastic lip right here. So this is all the stuff you guys kind of have to figure out on your own when you get one of these kits to make sure that you're not running into any clearance problems and then you do all this work and you're like, oh no, I gotta open it back up <laughs> and try to figure out you know, where things are going and such. So we could do that. Uh, I could also mount the speaker like that. So that's another option right there. So I think we're gonna go with that right there. And um, yeah, that should all be covered up. All these wires and things hanging out, we'll get all that cleaned up. So the first thing to do is actually run, this is the chuff switch, I gotta clean it up, it's got some hot glue still on her. Um, this is the magnetic uh, switch, so every time a magnet passes by the switch, it chuffs. Now it closes the circuit, or this kit came with two very small magnets, and I have another one that's stuck on my helping hand right here, and it's actually this little dot right there. So I stuck them there so I didn't lose them, and we'll actually super glue that to the axle when that time comes. So I'm gonna flip her around and then glue the chuff switch in. So I ran uh, the chuff switch right here. It's all black, it's kinda hard to see, but this is the chuff switch right here in my hand. And I'm going to power up the circuit card and place the magnet, so I can get it, there it is. Place this little baby magnet right there on the uh, inside of the wheel, as they recommend. And just like that. So you can see the magnet is right here on this wheel, and that's going to spin around and hopefully closing our little magnetic switch. Now I'm going to power up the circuit so we can kind of uh, calibrate this thing. So before I glue it all in the place, make sure it's actually going to work. So uh, it should be in somewhat close proximity right here. Um, let's see. Right about there should work. Well, let's power her up and let her spin. Make get pretty close to her. And I only use one magnet because this locomotive has smaller wheels, so one magnet should do. And uh, there you go. So as that little magnet runs around in a circle, closes the chuff switch. So we're gonna get this all glued into place and then after that we'll be able to start mounting the circuit card, speaker, and all that fun stuff. Alright guys, so the magnet is actually super glued in place. So you just spread super glue all around the magnet holding it in place. It shouldn't fly off. These little magnets are very strong. But for the um, little magnetic switch we're gonna use hot glue. So I got the hot glue gun here ready to roll. And um, yeah, just gonna hot glue that in place. A little bit back here and hot glue does kind of make a mess but this should stick pretty nicely on the plastic here all right guys so i actually ended up smashing that hot glue down into that um trough in here inside the truck and it looks kind of rough but it's working just right check that out isn't that awesome so yeah we're ready to move on to the next steps. So I'm gonna flip this over. We're gonna start mounting up the circuit card. Alright guys, so I have the wires picked out, and the easiest way to do that is that your center wire, which is, uh, it's this guy right here. This is your center track, that's your considered hot. The other one's ground, so we're gonna do red to center wire right there. And before we solder any of this, I'm gonna take heat shrink, this stuff right here, and we're going to place that over top so we don't forget and slide that over the uh, stripped wires there. There we go, there's one, and I do both at the same time because if you forget, it's a lot harder to uh, get heat shrink back on there rather than just doing it from the start. So here's red and black with the uh, heat shrink on there. I know I'm using a lot of heat shrink, it's just in case you know I create a giant solder mess. Make sure, double check to make sure that is the center wire. And they had to do two wires with this one because the chassis is plastic, so there is no ground. Everything's uh, insulated, which is kind of cool if you think about it. The old days, the post war stuff, even now, usually your shell of everything is considered the ground. 
and on here this is the only ground you get and then on the tether that goes up to the uh, engine this used to be grounded out too so the engine grounded to the tender and uh, yeah this is kinda cool so this board should work really well in here without any uh, grounding issues unless I screw up the wiring which could happen you know anything's possible alright we're gonna take our soldering gun here take some good old solder and just quickly run this let's see here we go really quick solder joint boom and whoops let's do it real quick there we go that's it painless a lot of smoke <laughs> and that solder's still hot right there wow I just didn't want it to melt the plastic get that out of there that is one plus of having all metal usually you don't get solder you know solder burns if it drips down we're gonna fold these wires down like such actually I'll go this way on that one there we go the wires are all folded down and we're just gonna slide our heat shrink over top like that right there and they did give us this really nice little socket I think I installed that the socket right here um, sometimes Lionel does that put the other heat shrink over top and then we're gonna use the uh, poor man's heat gun now I use a soldering gun to shrink stuff because if you light up a heat gun you're putting heat everywhere like this model is plastic the circuit card does not like heat circuit cards are meant to uh, disperse heat so why am I gonna spray heat all over my circuit card but heat guns are a nice tool to have so just really quickly run the soldering iron the edge of it or the side of it to shrink these wires up keep them nice and clean love a clean wiring job and there we go nice and shrinked look how clean that is right out of the factory alright guys so I even have the light wired up now which is uh, right here back of the tender so when you give her power LED cuts on now I did that with the quick connects on the black and red leads the main power leads because if that LED were to burn out I can swap it out instead of desoldering this whole thing I just did and uh, it's kinda like a light socket in a way it's a fail safe now next we're gonna install our battery just use a normal 9 volt you can use a rechargeable but there is no recharging circuit this is not like a proto sound one uh, system in here it's just uses the battery uh, in between voltage drops so if you have like a piece of dirty track and then when you switch direction you'll still have your rail sounds now also you get a startup and um, a shutdown cycle so let's start her up and then if you shut her down without the battery the sounds just go away compared to plugging in the battery simple as that and then we're going to take the power off the transformer no power and it's going to go through a whole little shutdown cycle utilizing the power from this alkaline battery you don't have to use the battery but you may have dropouts and sound and all of that and like I said even if there's dirty track this will chug for two or three seconds using the battery power and then it will come back when it finds power from your track alright guys so I set the rail sands tender on the track and it was very quiet so I messed around with some speaker placement and I figured out the best place for the speaker was on the underside of the shell right there and uh, the 3M tape is holding the speaker in place and then I drilled some holes right here in the plastic frame um, not around this uh, reinforcement dimple here for the trucks just kind of around it so when this is all together and the wiring is actually uh, somewhat uh, tame in there compared to before and now that all fits together just like that there we go and I've got some holes underneath this back truck right there I drilled a couple holes in there you can see them right there so this should be much louder right now so let's go test her out alright guys so I finally got that speaker situated and I actually have to lift up the board and turn it and kind of contort it in there it's not exactly pretty I will say that that board does need some more wiggle room inside that tender but it probably involves like a Dremel tool hollowing some plastic out and all of that fun stuff but it works it sounds great we're gonna bring it around the yard so you guys can take a good listen we're gonna run it a couple times so uh, 
Here we go guys, I'm so happy that this is finally sounding nice and loud, so here we go. Alright guys, so here she is, trackside, finally on the tracks, and this locomotive sounds fantastic. It is so much better having that speaker facing um, literally the frame and the sound holes underneath the frame really projecting this little locomotive. So, uh, 561 is ready to roll, the little 080 starter set steam engine. So let's get her started here. All right. Oh, she wants to move. <laughs> She's like, Nick, I don't have time for this. There we go. So the whistle while the locomotive is idle is a different pitch than when it's in running. So here's a short burst, and then you can hold the whistle button in. And the locomotive also does other sounds, like an injector sound, uh, air pumps, all kinds of stuff. So you can do a really short burst, and then we can take her out after hitting the bell. So I think the bell on this sounds phenomenal. Listen to that. Alright, so when you take her out and you hit the whistle, the pitch of the whistle will change when you're not going to move. Gosh, you really wanted to go. Alright, so listen to the whistle now. There she is, guys, and then the shutdown sequence. There you go. It's as simple as that. Uh, I think it brought this little engine back to life, and uh, hopefully this inspired you guys to uh, do a little bit of, I guess, rail sounds work on your own. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this video on upgrading this little whistle tender with a starter set to Rail Sounds 2. And I actually purchased the board on eBay. It was around $105 or so with shipping. And the seller was, uh, I believe it was named Paper Booth. And he actually shipped it within two days from Michigan. It got here in two days, guys. It was amazing. He has lots of other Rail Sounds boards on there, all scavenged from old classic. Lionel Rail Sounds pieces. He's got all kinds of stuff on there, even some ERR boards. So yeah, I definitely um, have a lot of items on my watch list on eBay from that seller. He's got a lot of cool stuff. And I've got tons of engines in the collection that need a good voice. Not a good home, they are in a good home. They need a good voice, like my Williams collection. So yeah, definitely, um, definitely we'll be buying more from that seller. Amazing prices, amazing collection of Rail Sounds units, all waiting to be purchased. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I really had a great time making this, and I learned a lot, and hopefully you guys learned a little bit, or you said, you know, Nick's doing it all wrong and laughing at me the whole time. But if you guys had a great time in this video, and you're new to the channel, always consider subscribing. Giving the video one of these really helps, and I love hearing your guys' comments. Let me know what you think. Did I do the right thing of switching this from the girls' train into the 080, or do you guys disagree with it? Let me know in comments. But anyways, guys, until next time, happy railroading. We'll see you next time. See you guys.